In this video, I'm going to detail some Muay Thai v Sandabouts. Now, I'm not going to argue that Muay Thai isn't a very effective style. However, when you talk to Muay Thai fans and MMA fans who have an interest in striking, sometimes you can be left with the impression that it's the only effective style. I'm going to collate a few clips of Muay Thai v Sandabouts here. Now, in my opinion, these bouts tend to be quite even, but I'm going to argue the pro sander position because I think my tie has received enough positive attention elsewhere. I'm going to focus on the bouts featuring the most famous stadium champions from Thailand. You can check in my description for the name of the competitors featured here. Almost all of them have a Wikipedia record. Now this is the only time where I'll make an indirect point, but my first bout will feature Kel Klai. Kao Klai is most famous for moving up from the lightweight division through five or six weight divisions depending on which sanctioning body you use and knocking out Mighty Mo with a flying roundhouse kick. Mighty Mo at the time was generally considered a top 10 heavyweight in the K1 promotion. As you may be aware, K1 was the most competitive kickboxing league of its time, providing a financial incentive to attract the top talent from around the kickboxing world in addition to Olympic gold medalists and world champions in conventional boxing. Now, when you see Kao Klai against a standard competitor of his own size, things don't go as well for him as they did against Mighty Mo. In terms of the format of these bouts, they generally take the form of more open rules where either competitor can use all eight limbs and any throwing skill providing they remain standing, or they take the form of more watered down rules when no throws or elbows are legal. I think it's a fair trade-off, as obviously a standard competitor will excel with takedowns from the clinch, whereas a Muay Thai competitor will excel with strikes from the clinch. So if no clinching is legal, both competitors are not using their full arsenal. It's also worth bearing in mind if you're interested in MMA, after each takedown for a standard competitor, the bout is immediately stood up, whereas in MMA, one takedown can potentially win you the round. So obviously these takedowns come at a high cardiovascular cost as well. In this bout, the standard competitor manages to dominate as he manages to avoid Kalkai's potent offense in between scoring his own takedowns. Now the next two bouts will feature a Thai cab driver against the best China has to offer. Just kidding. These two bouts will feature Sen Shai. If you know Muay Thai, then you'll know he has been the best fighter of this generation. Nevertheless, he's not unbeatable and not immune to having an off day like everybody else. Here he is in two kickboxing bouts against standard competitors. I am going to run through highlights for these bouts for the sake of keeping this video short. The full versions of these bouts can generally be found online and I'll leave details in the description to help you find them if you want to. This bout is Senshai vs Hong Zin. The first 90 seconds of this bout feature a feeling out process. Both fighters use the jab and the push kick trying to establish dominance. Towards the end of the first round it appears that Hong Zin is the more aggressive fighter and his superior work rate takes over. This leads me to believe he won the first round. The second round establishes a pattern. Hong Zin is throwing more strikes, but Sen Shai is being cleaner with his. On balance, I score the second round a draw. Though Sen Shai is effective with kicks to the body, and also knees to the body, punches the head score more in K1 than in Sander or Muay Thai. In the third round, it looks like Sen Shai is going to turn on the style against the tiring Hong Zin. He lands punches and catches Hong Zin with a head kick. But Hong Zin comes roaring back. Through the middle of the round, Sen Shai generally picks off a fatiguing Hong Zin. Unexpectedly, with 30 seconds left in the round, Hong Zin punctuates a combo with a head kick of his own. This is an incredible feat and is almost unheard of in Muay Thai. He follows up with the hardest two left hands of the fight. Whilst round 3 is a high damage round for both fighters, I scored it for Sen Shai as he did more damage through the middle of the round. The judges score the bout a draw like me and it goes to the overtime extension round. Going into the overtime round it appears Sen Shai is fresh and Hong Zin is exhausted. 
However, when the round starts, it repeats the pattern of the second round. Hong Xin is throwing more strikes and being more aggressive, but Senshai appears to have backed off, looking for cleaner, more defensive counters. I would speculate that although at this point of the fight, both fighters had been hurt, Hong Xin was the younger, hungrier fighter, and his persistence and aggression really evened up the overtime extension round. I thought the final round could have gone either way, but either competitor was a worthy winner in my opinion, and it was just a very, very close bout. The next bout will also be kickboxing rules. The first thing that strikes me about Wei is that he doesn't immediately look like a fighter compared to other fighters featured in this video. Maybe it's just me, but I'm not sure. Generally though, appearances can be deceptive. If you question Wei, then you can check out his bout with Chike Lindsay elsewhere on YouTube. It has the look of Joe Lozon executing Melvin Manhoff. This bout will feature a more obvious contrast in styles. The first round begins with Wei attacking with the right roundhouse kick from a square stance and a longer range left side kick. Senshai appears confident, going for exotic attacks and landing a push kick of his own. Towards the end of the round, Wei finds a home for his left side kick, which edges the round for him in my eyes on points. The second round begins with a first left off. Wei starts to dominate Senshai with his side kick attack, making use of his reach and impeccable sense of timing. Senshai closes the distance, but is unable to mount any meaningful offence, as the referee separates several clinches. It's worth bearing in mind here that both fighters have skills in the clinch that they're unable to use under these rules. As the third round begins, it appears that Senshai has a great sense of urgency. He catches a side kick from Wei, and lands a big left hand that appears to wobble him. Although it is unclear the degree to which Wei is hurt, or merely off balance. He manages to weather the storm. Throughout the rest of the round, it appears that Wei throws less strikes, although he doesn't completely abandon his side kick attack. Senshai starts to have more success with his left roundhouse kick in this round. However, with no knockdown, it can only be a 10-9 round in Senshai's favor, and it's not enough to recover from him dropping the first two rounds. I scored it 29-28 in favor of Wei, and the judges apparently agree, giving him the decision victory. The next bout will be the most explosive, and at least in one sense, the most definitive of the bouts I will feature here. Lam Song Graham in the brown shorts is a two-time stadium champion in Thailand, and he has also won world titles in Muay Thai competing against European and Australian fighters. Zhang Kayin is the standard competitor in the red shorts, who also holds a victory over John Wayne Parr. Whilst coming close to scoring a stoppage himself, Langston Cram gets caught with a spinning back fist. It's followed up with an overhand right that scores the KO victory for Zhang Kai-in. It's also worth noting that there is a rematch between these two five years later, with Kai-in once again emerging the victor after a unanimous decision victory. The next bout will feature Sam Kaur against Lei. Sam Kaur is known by many for a spectacular left roundhouse kick. It pops off the screen even for those who aren't usually familiar with Muay Thai or kickboxing for the tremendous velocity that he generates in the kick. Although it's worth noting in Thailand he was known as much for his range of skills as he was for his left roundhouse kick. He was a multiple time stadium champion and one of the most highly regarded competitors in the sport. This bout will be a return to the hybrid rules where both competitors are allowed to use all their clinch techniques. In the first round, it looks like Sam Kaur might have his way with his kicking clinic. He connects to the body and connects to the leg, bouncing his leg off the ground, doubling up on his kicks. Once an element of fatigue kicks in, however, Lay starts to time his kicks and counter with throws and takedowns, racking up the points. In the fourth round, in a clinch sequence, Sam Kaur looks very dangerous, but Lei manages to survive. 
It goes back to being a takedown clinic, with Lace scoring 12 takedowns in all, earning him the victory on points. This bout concludes my video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found it interesting.